we've all been there as photographers. We invest time, we invest money to go to a place, we carefully compose our shot, we choose our subject well, then we go back home and when we look at the photos on a big screen, we realize that the photos are not sharp enough, are not crisp enough, or worse, they are shaky and they are moved. And this is happening to all photographers at some point. This is a common mistake. And in this video, I will highlight five of these mistakes, five mistakes that lead to unsharp or shaky photos. And if you understand how to avoid those five mistakes, because I will also give you tips on how to avoid them, then I guarantee you that you're going to have sharp photos every time. And at the end of the video, I'm going to also share a bonus mistake it's something that I've seen people doing so often and they just don't realize it's a mistake. So let's get started with mistake number one, that is camera shake. Beginner photographers do this mistake because they're not paying attention to the shutter speed they're using. If you're going to handheld your camera and shutter speed is too slow for a handheld shot, then you will end up with a shaky image. Now, what you can do is activate the image stabilization that you have in body stabilization if you do have one or lens stabilization if you have one and then you look at the shutter speed you're, that you're using if the shutter speed is not at least one over the focal length that you're using or better yet two times the focal length that you're using then you're going to end up with a shaky image in order to compensate for that you can increase the iso and now you're going to have the ability to, to set shutter speed that is faster you can open the aperture a little bit more and again you let more light into the sensor and you can also make the shutter speed faster or you can put the camera on a tripod and at that point it is completely stabilized mistake number two improper focus when you choose a subject that subject should be in focus when you're photographing with a telephoto lens the mistake that you make is not putting the focus point exactly on that subject now, if you're going to use a wide angle lens, then you're going to put the focus point in a certain distance from you and the camera in order to have a depth of field big enough to have the subject or, and all the other compositional elements in focus. Mistake number three, incorrect aperture. If you're going to photograph a bigger subject and you're going to use a bigger uh, focal length, but the aperture is wide open, is 1.8 for example, only some of the elements of the subject will be in focus. Now if you go overboard and if you, and if you go f22 or f32, the subject will be in focus, but the, that focus will, that sharpness, it's not going to be the best sharpness that that lens can produce because above f16 diffraction takes, uh, takes the charge of your, of your sharpness. The plus is that with modern day software, you can increase the sharpness of your photos and you can uh, overcome uh, this problem with diffraction. If you're going to need F22 or, or F32 because the situation requires it, then my suggestion is not to think about dif diffraction and just go for it. The best scenario is when you stay at F8, F11, and I'm talking about landscape photography because with portraiture is a there's another discussion. So with landscape photography, you better stay in, on F8, F11, F16 range. I usually try to photograph at F11 because it doesn't matter if I'm using a, a, a telephoto lens uh, or wide angle lens, this aperture of, or of F11 helps me to get everything in sharp. Mistake number four, insufficient depth of field. Now, the depth of field that you create is the area where the elements are going to be sharp in your photo. The dimension of depth of field is dictated by the aperture that you're using, the focal length that you're using, and the point where you put your focus. In order to better understand the concept of depth of field, you have to know the, the relation between all these elements. So, the more millimeters you have, the focal, when the focal length increases, the depth of field becomes smaller. When the aperture becomes wider, like uh, 1.8, 2.8, uh, it's, again, the depth of field becomes smaller. The um, 
closer you have the focus point to your camera, the depth of field becomes smaller. So when you're using a telephoto lens, in order to have a depth of field big enough to capture the subject, focus exactly on the subject because the depth of field goes a little bit before the focus point, a little bit more um, uh, beyond the focus point. If you're going to use a wide angle lens, like 17 millimeter, because the focal length shrinks, the depth of field is bigger. But make sure you don't focus too close to your camera because again, you're going to have a smaller depth of field. It also counts how far the subject is from you because if the subject is right in front of your camera, even with a wide angle, you, you would focus exactly on that, uh, on that subject. Mistake number five, motion blur. When you want to photograph elements that are moving, like cars, people that are running, leaves blown by the wind, or fields of grass blown by the wind, if you want to freeze that motion, you need a shutter speed that will uh, match that motion. Usually when you have, let's say, a, a person dancing or running, you have to stay at, at least 200th of a second to make sure that you have a chance to capture it still. If we're talking about fast moving cars, you need to experiment. You, you may need a shutter speed really, really fast to capture it. And usually when we have things that are moving really fast, uh, the only chance of capturing them in, uh, or freeze the motion is to do a panning, or you can foreground them from, um, from, uh, from their front the, the, the subject coming towards you because it's much easier to freeze the motion than if the subject passes parallel to you. So whenever you have something moving, you need to think about the shutter speed um, if you want to capture it still. It doesn't matter if you're going to use a tripod off or if the image is handheld uh, or if the photo is taken handheld. If the elements are moving, you can't control that. So you need a shutter speed fast enough to freeze the motion increase the ISO, open the aperture. If freezing the motion of, a, of the subject is your main priority, you have to take all those other things and put them aside, like generating more uh, noise in your photo by increasing the ISO or like having a smaller depth of field and um, many other elements out of focus. And mistake number six, the bonus mistake that I talked about in the beginning of this video. It's something that I noticed during my workshops because there I had the opportunity to watch and see different people with different gear brands and different camera and different lenses. If you're doing slightly longer exposures and you leave the image stabilization on your lens active, on some brands this may lead to shaky images. When I had the Canon DSLR with the Canon lens, it didn't bother me. It, nothing happened. Um, there were people that were having Canon plus, plus Tamron lenses or Nikon plus Tamron lenses. They were experiencing this problem. Now, when I'm having the mirrorless, I'm, I didn't even try if this uh, problem exists because with the mirrorless, the image stabilization stays always on and Drain the, drains the battery and also forces the motor of the image stabilization to work all the time. And I don't think this is a good thing. So whenever you're photographing um, and you're doing longer exposures and the camera is on your tripod, this is extremely important. This is not valid when you handheld the camera. This is only when the camera is on the tripod. Deactivate the image stabilization, either if we're talking in body image stabilization so or camera image stabilization, it doesn't matter, just deactivate it if you're doing longer exposure. If you want to learn more about landscape photography, my ebook on landscape photography or my workshops are on my website and the link is in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.